Coach Washington. Good afternoon, Mookie Hawkins, Waffle Sports 1080. Welcome back to the States. Thank you. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. I'm um, fortunate, you know, you had Daquan Jones go down because he was just going ham those first f couple of series just to just just showing, you know, one man wrecking crew right there. Unfortunate for him to go down. Um, what do you tell your your guys at that instance when you lose a piece such as Daquan Jones? What do you tell you guys? Well, you don't really have time to to say anything about about the injury because the game continues to go on and. You, you've got to you've got to close ranks, stay focused, and you've got to continue to move forward. And we we all, in that particular instance, we we feel for the loss of, of Daquan or or anybody else on defense. Attrition is real in the NFL, um, but at that particular point, you just have to focus on the on the on the next situation that you have in front of you, and just always keep a great thought uh, for Daquan and just give him the spiritual uplift that we can. Absolutely, Coach. And again, A.J. Espineza, I mean, another week of him being confident and consistent. Um, you know, we, we had these conversations every week. What do you think that's really going on with A.J. from this year into previous years? I think A.J.'s confidence is at an all-time high. I think uh, his preparation has been outstanding. Uh, that's revealed in watching him uh, throughout the week in the meetings, on the practice field especially with all the situations that we try and isolate and present to him. He's just doing a really great job. Just he's, he's playing with a lot of confidence. He's playing fast. He's playing ahead of the play and we need that to continue. And, uh, and, and if I'm a betting person, I say that that will continue with AJ. Absolutely. Coach one more, if I can, uh, Von Miller, what did you see out of Von Miller doing his pitch, uh, his pinch count? Yeah, I saw Von's, uh, efficiency. I saw some of the sharp, tight angles. I, I saw those things continue to uh, improve from one snap to the next. And uh, and I saw a guy that was getting, you know, this obviously was finding his footing. I mean, stepping into live NFL action you know, after uh, not being out there for 11 months, even for a person of his caliber and resume, that, that's, a, that's a tough duty. But as the game progressed and as he found himself in that atmosphere with the speed of the game, Every snap, I saw a little bit. I saw glimpses of the old bond, and I expect that to continue. Absolutely, Coach. Thank you for your time, and good luck this week. Thank you, sir. Hey, Eric. John Warrell with the AP. Um, just last week, you were talking about how difficult it is to replace Radavius White. How difficult is it replacing Matt Milano right now? Well, um, you, you lose a lot when 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 Matt's when Matt's not in and, um, you know, just what he provides for our defense, his experiences, his skill set, the talent, uh, that, that's, that's a significant uh, piece to take out. And uh, but what you try and do is take the next person and make sure that we are, that person understands how they need to succeed. He understands the job duty, the description. And, and we move forward and we rally around that person and do everything we can to support him and make sure that he doesn't have to do, he does, we're not looking for him to replace Matt, but just be the best version that he can be. As, as difficult as it was and as depleted as you got, was there a sense of encouragement that, you know, this group played the defense as a whole, I think they were on the field for 83 offensive Jaguar snaps. Um, they wore down at the end, but just uh, are, you, are you impressed with how they held up through through three and a half quarters? I communicated uh, to the to uh, the defensive line, at least. Uh, once we got on the on the plane, on the buses and I had a chance to kind of look at parts of the game, I watched the entire thing on the flight. And it was a gritty performance. That's that's the best way that I could describe it. Uh, you know, we we got a sack fumble on play number seventy, play play seventy in the ball game, and even uh, in the four minute situation at the end, Tim Settle, Ed Oliver, uh, Kendall Vickers, everybody that we rotated in and out of the game, uh, Kingsley Jonathan, who was involved in special teams all day, and he was involved in that sack. Uh, strip sack on play number 70. He was actually the person that punched the ball out. And so it was just a gritty performance that guys, I think, were – I don't think they were focusing on what we 
weren't doing or what was not going on. I just think they tried to play every snap as hard as they could to give our team a chance to win the football game. And I, I have a lot of respect for that. Right. Uh, and I, I, I agree. Um, and last thing, we've we've been talking about Kier Elam for, for quite some time. He's not had a chance to play. Um, the fact that from what I saw from TV that he may have struggled against Calvin Ridley um, and was eventually replaced. Is that a cause for concern? And a draw, is that a cause for concern as to how he played in his debut of the season? Well, you know, there, there are ups and downs with every NFL player, even people who are regarded as some of the better players. Everybody has a moment or two that, they just, they just, they're struggling to get into the flow. And what you have to be careful with that is to not let that overtake your confidence, not let that define you as a player. You know, Kyrie acknowledged that yesterday, emotionally and mentally, he was trying, he was struggling to find his footing. I would not bet against Kyrie at all. I've seen the antithesis of that. I've seen the total opposite of that in terms of him making plays for us in critical situations and playoff games, coming down with the football. And so, I just – I would not bet against him. I think he will find, you know, what he needs to find in terms of being able to play as fast as he possibly can and use his exceptional skill set to be disruptive. And uh, he'll play better as we move forward. Thanks so much, Eric. I appreciate your candor. You're, you're welcome. Coach, just uh, speaking of that, there were some reports earlier today that you, you brought in um, Josh Norman. Uh, is that something just to help coach the younger guys with Tredavious being out? Um, well, exactly why uh, Josh was signed. You know, I'll, I'll defer to Brandon and, and Sean as far as the rationale, but just as, as far as the player, I, I have a long, I go back a long way with Josh, and I know, you know, the, the, the type of player that he's been throughout his career, the intensity that he brings to the game, the size, the ability – to be disruptive, to disrupt the routes and the timings of uh, timing of receivers on the line of scrimmage, to be a jam guy. I, I just, you know, I know that if if he's in the mix, you know, we're looking to get some of the things that he'll bring to the game, bring to the table as a, as a, as a player. And I look forward to seeing it, if that is exactly true. Absolutely, coach. Bringing in those season guys, especially the ones that knows the scheme, right? So, yeah, that's the question I had to shoot for today. But appreciate your time, coach. You bet. Thanks. Hey, Coach Washington, with the depth that will continue to be tested on the defense, why do you believe in the depth on this roster? Why do you think they're ready for the challenge that a lot of them are going to have to step into since you get to see these guys through walkthroughs, through meetings, and through practices every single day? Well, you just said it, you know, my exposure to them. And, and you know, when you start this process in the offseason and you watch the players uh, make their case to be a part of this final 53-man roster, when they make their case to establish a role on this defense and on the team, you, I guess I have a little bit different vantage point in terms of why they're here. And they're here because we believe that you know, if there's an opportunity for them to go into the football game and to help us win and help us win, that they that they can absolutely do that. So uh, my exposure to them and what I know about them away from being able to start or whatever, that, you know, that that's why we have the confidence. That's why I have the confidence, because I've seen them in other in a little bit more depth than the average person. Thanks, Coach. You're welcome. 